Okay. Welcome to the Village of Buchanan, October 6, 2020 meeting. This meeting is being conducted in accordance with Executive Order 202.1, which allows us to uh, be able to, um, to do it, transmit it this way. Please note that you may hear the meeting live by going to Village uh, Facebook page at the time of the meeting. And you may call in with any questions or comments to 914-737-1034. So before we get started, I'd like to tell everyone that this is our organizational meeting that usually occurs the beginning of April. Um, normally, the village elections are in November. And um, that was um, uh, Governor no. extended it twice and our uh, election was on September 15th. So this is considered our first meeting at the organizational meeting. We will not be doing certain appointments this evening. Um, we will do that at the next meeting. And um, so hopefully things in the world and the village and, all, and everywhere go back to normal eventually, but uh, not sure. So please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the to the flag, flag of, of the United States, United States of America and to the Republic, the Republic for which it stands, stands one, nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, liberty, liberty and, and justice for all. For all. And normally at our organizational meeting, we don't do any business, but there's so much going on this evening. We will do the organizational meeting and we will also be um, voting on some other items also. So, you know, just bear with us. It's going to be a, a lengthy meeting. Um, the results of the village election, September 15, 2020. This includes both districts, districts one and two. For mayor, two-year term, Teresa Knickerbocker, 72 votes, Robert Lapica, 52. For trustee, two-year term, Richard Funchen, 86. Nick Zachary, 83. Jeremy Basso, 4. Sean Murray, 3. Michael Wentz, 3. Bob Lapica, 2. Her, um, Harmon Baker, 1. Bill Hetty, 1. James Mc, McHale, 1. George Mo Merritt, 1. S Silas Santos, 1. And Michael Scott, 1. So now we are going, I'm, I am going to have this evening uh, have our attorney, Stephanie Porteous, uh, swear me in. Okay. We ready? Raise my right hand. Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. Yes. I state your name. I, Teresa Knickerbocker. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York, and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the position of mayor, of the position of mayor, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And what I, I'd like to say, because um, there has been things happening in the world, but when any public official takes this oath, let's just review, I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York. That's what we, that's the oath that we take. And we're seeing different things in the world, but I just, I just needed to say that. Okay. Um, Deputy Mayor Richard Funchen, are you ready? I'm ready. Raise your right hand. I state your name. I, Richard Funchen. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I am, will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the position of. Of the position of trustee. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. Thank you. Yay. Congratulations. 
Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. The next is Nicholas Zachary, and I believe our administrator, Marcus Serrano, will be doing the honor of swearing him in. Yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I state your name. I, Nicholas Zachary. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the position of trustee. Of the position of trustee. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, at this time, I would like to appoint uh, Richard Funchen as the deputy mayor. Thank you. Congratulations. And I am now going to read some of the organizational meeting information. The establishing meeting dates, special meeting procedures, and adoption of the rules of procedure and the open meetings law. Regular, uh, pursuant to section 4-412 of the village law, the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees to be held on the first Tuesday of each month, commencing at 7.30, where holidays shall fall on the, at the day of the meeting. The meeting will be held the day following the holiday. The meeting shall take place at the municipal building, unless we are in a COVID-19 situation. Uh, the Board of Trustees workshop meeting is to be held on the fourth Tuesday of each month, com commencing at 7.30, and will also take place at the municipal building or on Zoom. Special meetings will be held when matters of business warrant and shall be called by either the mayor or by two of the trustees of the village Buchanan acting together. In the event of a special meeting being called by the mayor, mayor, every member of the board of trustees shall be informed by telephone by the village clerk or another member of the board of trustees of the time, date, location, and subject of the special meeting and unless the meeting is called to respond to an emergency concerning the safety and welfare of the village, notice of the meeting shall be given to the trustees and newspapers and posted on the village notice boards at least 72 hours in advance of the meeting and otherwise in conformance of the public officer's law. A quorum shall be required to conduct business. A quorum of five members board of trustees shall be three. In the absence of a quorum, a lesser number may adjourn and compel the attendance of absent members. Executive session shall be held in accordance with the New York State Public Officers Law, Section 105. All executive sessions shall be um, commenced at a public meeting. Voting pursuant to village law, each member of the board shall have one vote. The mayor may vote on any matter, but must vote in case of a tie. A majority of the total authorized voting power is necessary to pass a matter unless otherwise specified by state law. An absentation, silence, or absence shall be considered a negative vote for the purposes of determining the final vote on a matter. Guidelines for public comment. The public shall be allowed to speak only during the public comment period of the meeting or at such other time as the presiding officer shall allow. Speakers must step up to the front of the room and speak into the microphone. Speakers must give their name, address, and organization represented, if any. Speakers must be recognized by the presiding officer. Speakers must limit their remarks to three minutes on a given topic and may, may be recognized again by the presiding officer after other speakers have had the opportunity to speak. Speakers may not yield any remain, remaining time they have to another speaker. Board members may, with the permission of the mayor, interrupt the speaker during their remarks, but only for the purpose of clarification or information. All remarks shall be addressed, uh, addressed to the presiding officer. Sorry, I just we just have a few things that we have to read. We only do this once a year. Speakers shall observe the, com the commonly accepted rules of courtesy, decorum, dignity, and good taste, which include refraining from offensive, insulting, and threatening speech directed toward any person present or not present. Interested parties or their representatives may address the board with written communication. Written communication shall be delivered to the village, administration, administ village administrator or clerk. Open meeting laws. 
Pursuant to the public officer's law, the Board of Trustees hereby adopts the requirements of the open meeting law and hereby adopts the notice requirements of the public officer's law as the official procedure of the Board of Trustees. The next organizational meeting will be held on April 6, 2021. The designation of village depo depositories um, pursuant to section 4-412 of the village law at the J.P. Morgan Chase Bank uh, in Croton and the J.P. Morgan uh, Bank in Peekskill and Orange Bank and Trust Company, 2141 Compound Road in Cortland Manor, be designated as a depository of the village of Buchanan and that funds of the village be deposited in said bank and be subject to the withdrawals upon checks, notes, drafts, bills of exchange, acceptances, undertakings, or other orders for the payment of money when signed on behalf of the village by any of the following officers. The mayor, um, Teresa Knickerbocker, and the village administrator, Marcus Serrano. The official, we designate the official newspaper at this meeting, and that will be um, the Journal News. Um, we also established the mileage allowance rate for reimbursement, um, and that is set at 57.5 cents. So if someone uses their own vehicle for village business and doesn't use a village vehicle, but if they use their own vehicle, I believe that's what the federal government's rate is now, 57.5 cents per mile. Adopting the village procurement policy, whereas the mayor and the board of trustees of the village of Buchanan are required to adopt and, uh, and formulate certain policies and procedures regarding procurements by the village. And whereas the village has previously adopted a procurement policy in conformance with all New York state laws and in conformance with the office of the state controller, and the board desires that policy to remain in effect, the procurement pro policy now is in effect is once again adopted as a procurement policy of the village of Buchanan. Authorizing officers and employees of the village to attend conferences, whereas general municipal law 77-B authorizes municipal officials and employees to attend schools, conferences, seminars, etc., conducted for the benefit of the local government with prior approval of the board of trustees and the mayor and the board of trustees of the village of Buchanan have determined that is in the best interest of the village, its residents, its um, residents and officers and employees of the village from time to time attend conference and seminars of, pub of public employees and officials for educational and training and other similar purposes. It is therefore resolved that officers and employees are hereby authorized to attend the following schools, conferences, seminars. NICOM's annual meeting and training school, NICOM's fall training school for fiscal officers and municipal clerks, NICOM's election seminar, New York State Controller's Advanced Accounting Course, New York State County Management Association Annual Conference and Fall Training Seminar, Westchester Municipal Planning Federation Seminars, Westchester County Firearms and Deadly Physical Force Training. That is not for the board members, that's for police officers. Westchester County Police Academy Basic In Training Service. So on a motion. So move. Second. 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 All in I have favor? a question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have yeah. a question. Uh, go back to the voting thing. Uh -huh. is, is the voting uh, for, when you abstain, it says it's a negative vote. Is that a village rule or is it a state rule? Maybe Marcus, you would know. Uh, that's a good. I, I nobody abstains. I don't know, Stephanie. Oh, I what know. About, what about that's if you refuse? Say again. What about if you recuse yourself or abstain? Is recusal the same as an abstention? Not according to what we're doing. What we're saying here is that an abstention is. May I? The point is you cannot assume a positive vote. If you recuse yourself or if you abstain or uh, if you're absent, it's counted as a negative vote. It's because you cannot assume a positive vote, which would help pass something, uh, act on something. So, it, you know, basically you're counting out of the five members, you're counting the positive votes and you need three to pass something. So if somebody's not there, somebody recuses themselves um, or, you know. Are you saying if somebody's not there, it's, it's negative? It, it's I, automatically, 
the same as a negative vote because you cannot count it as a positive. There's no other choice. Yeah. So, so Rachel, let's say you have you have uh, you only have three people voting on something. Only two yeah. people vote yes. The other two who are not there, there'll be a no, so the vote would be denied. So you have to have a quorum okay. of no, three. Yeah, no, in other words, there's no per provision for really abstention or for people not there. You, you could, as long as that's not the majority that will turn the vote to a negative vote. That's what you got to be careful about. Okay. My second question is on the designated village depository. I believe, Teresa, you would put my name in it. Is it now taken off? Nick, um, we did not have a, a, an administrator for quite some time, and Rich was also a signer. So if I wasn't available, uh, Rich was able to sign on the accounts. Is that, Cindy, is that still? And, and I, did have, I did have his name on there, and then at the last minute I took it off after I kind of read that whole paragraph. So we can put him back in. That's up to you. It doesn't matter to me. I just, yeah. you know. Yeah, but I, I think that's good because, God forbid, one of us gets sick, one of, you know. Yeah. Three's good. Three's good. Three is still a signer. Yeah. 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 As long as no, we need him. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, please. Thank you. That's a good question, Rich. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, that's it for me. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Nope. Comments? No. Okay. No. So let's go back to on a motion. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go to approve the meetings of uh, minutes of August 11th, 2020 board meeting. Any comments, questions? I'm fine with them all. Okay. Uh, nothing here. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Wayne, we're good? Is this on all the meetings, August 25th and September 1st? Are there any corrections on any of these meetings? I'm good on all three. Uh, same here. Okay, so let's Maybe I'm good. do all three of them together. So um, we're approving the minute, the minutes of August 11th, August 25th, and September 1st on a motion. So move. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great job, Cindy. Thank you. Comments from the floor, agenda items only. Cindy, is there anyone that has come in with a comment? There's nothing yet. No. Okay, all right. Um, going under new business, I'd like to move to amend the agenda. Um, I'd like to remove the discussion on the pool that's scheduled for this evening and move to the workshop. I, I think it's more appropriate for that discussion at a, at a workshop. Um, so moved. Second. Does that Second. require a motion? Yep. Yeah, because we're by motion. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we that will, so you know, that will be on the agenda for the workshop. Okay, next is a motion to call for a public hearing on November 10th, which is our next board meeting regarding Chapter 163 of the Village Code by amending 163 7-2. And that is the dumpster law. Stephanie, would you like to comment on that? Sure. If you guys recall, I think it was only a month or two ago when you enacted this, um, the dumpster fees, and we almost immediately got questions from property owners who were uh, interpreting this to mean that um, tenants of commercial properties or other properties would be responsible for the dumpster fee because we use the word uh, commercial establishment. Um, so we wanted to clarify it. And we, you know, in plain English, owners of all properties where dumpsters are serviced by the village of Buchanan are going to be the people, the person or persons billed and responsible for paying the fee. And they will be the uh, entity that will have a lien placed on the property should they choose not to pay those fees. And so everywhere it said, <laughs> Something like, you know, a person or a household or a commercial establishment has been changed to read owner of property or owner of land. So we're trying to make it extremely clear. And I think this does that. And those were the only changes. We didn't change the fees. We didn't change the dates for collection, you know, penalties for past due bills, unpaid dumpster fees. There were no other changes. And that's Which, that's if I may, makes perfect sense. It's the property owners that pay the taxes if their taxes go up they can Correct. pass on in their rents. 
it's the property <laughs> owners that pay the uh, dumpster fees. And if they choose to pass it on to their tenants, that's between them and their But it's definitely yes. all the owners. C correct. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so on a motion to set the so second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we're going to make a motion. I'm making a motion to appoint Jacob Tussle and Evan Doria as seasonal highway help from October 9th to December 23rd, 2020 at the rate of $13 an hour. This is something we do every year um, for our fall cleanup, for our leaf pickup. We hire um, at least two people to help with um, for the fall cleanup. So on a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The next is a motion authorizing the mayor to sign an agreement with the school district regarding a new wastewater connection of the school into the village system. So um, we've been discussing this for quite some time now. The school has built another building next to their offices on Trolley Road and they would like to connect and we have come to an agreement with that connection. Um, do any of the board members have any questions or comments to make on this? Nothing for me. Nothing okay. for me. Yeah, it's, it's yep. we finally have that resolved. So, um, on a motion. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? All right. Aye. And just so everybody understands, this is not something new. The school already is hooked up into our wastewater uh, system. So they're just adding another building um, to that. I think they've been since the '60s. The school has been been has been hooked up into the Village of Buchanan sewer system. Um, okay, we're going to make a motion to authorize Pizella Brothers to perform roadway patchwork along Rockledge Avenue. And um, all that information was in the packet. So. Um, does anybody have any questions? That's not just crack sealing. No, That's... crack sealing is a whole nother, whole nother thing that we yes. will still be doing. So this is a large okay. patch on on Rock Ledge that we'll be doing. Okay. Okay. And are they also going to do crack doing crack sealing for us? No, a different company does that. It's a different company. Okay. Yes. I believe that, that did Marcus with the crack sealing. We have a, a company that that. Uh, won a state bid and they will be doing that. That's correct. In fact, that was completed. I was going to report that when we get to reports okay. anyway. Right. Okay. So, on a motion? No move. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, now we have um, we have a few resolutions regarding a personnel matter and um, this is never an easy thing to do, um, but I will read the resolutions. Be it resolved that the Village of Buchanan Board of Trustees hereby appoints Peter Korn as the hearing officer in the matter of disciplinary proceedings. No, 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 no Teresa, reverse. go to the other ones first. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, on, it's on the back, it's duplex. Yeah. It no, be. I do, I have the other one. Yeah. I just, okay. it was just in the wrong order. I apologize. Whereas disciplinary charges have been referred against village employee Anthony Conti pursuant to section 75 of the civil service law. Now, therefore, it be resolved that upon the recommendation of the village administrator, Anthony Conti is hereby suspended without pay effective October 7th, 2020 for 30 calendar days pending the hearing and determination of those charges. And that should more and I'm sorry. Should more than 30 calendar days be required for this purpose, the village will later determine whether he shall thereafter remain suspended with pay until the completion of the hearing and determination of the charges or whether he will be permitted to return to work. On a motion. So move. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And added on to that, be it resolved 
that the Village of Buchanan Board of Trustees hereby appoints Peter Korn as the hearing officer in the matter of disciplinary proceedings against Anthony Conti. The hearing shall be conducted in accordance with Section 75 of the Civil Service Law. Peter Korn is hereby directed to cause a transcript to be made of such hearing, which shall be referred to the board, along with his findings of fact and recommendations as to penalty, if any, for review and final decision by the board. So this is appointing the hearing officer. So on a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 And and then Teresa, it's um on my notes on uh, the appointment of uh, Brian Cook as a temporary part-time building inspector for a rate of fifty dollars an hour. Oh, okay, that um. That was that was in my notes in the uh, in red. All right, so. On a motion to appoint Brian Cook as a part-time building inspector at $50 an hour. $50 an hour. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is my Zoom still up? No, I see you. You see yeah. me. I don't yep. see you. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Okay, so information from officers and departments, <coughs> Justice Court reports, August 2020th, received and filed. Uh, some of the amount, one was 550, the other amount was 325. Police report, August 2020, uh, moving summons is 32, total calls 173, parking summons is five, received and filed. Highway Department, August 2020. Thank you, Marcus. Once again, I you know we like to see all these reports and see see what's going on in the village. Absolutely. Received and filed. Wastewater treatment plant report, August 2020. Um, just so people understand how much is treated there, uh, in August it was. 7,114,803 gallons that is processed. The sludge that was removed from the plant was 65,000 gallons. So all is running well over there. So that's that's good news. And, and Teresa, if, you, if I may, um, we sure. actually had two inspections by the county. One is a state inspection and one is, is a county inspection. It all went very, very well. So um, uh, the plant is old, but it's still holding in there. and. Todd and the staff is doing a great staff, a great job so far, keeping everything up and running. Yeah, no, they're, they're doing a great job over there and, you know, we thank them. Perfect. Thank you. Attorney's report. Attorney Stephanie, what do you have for us this evening? A couple of things. So glad to hear that people are busy again in the village. The zoning board is on for next Wednesday, going live at Village Hall. We actually have three matters on. And on the next evening, the planning board is also meeting live at Village Hall, and we have two matters on. Um, so that's good. It's been months and months since we have very much. And the only other thing I have is the contract with the Buchanan Engine Company. I am still waiting on comments from counsel for the Buchanan Engine Company, and I'm sure I'll be getting them shortly. And then I'll report back to you if there are any other questions or suggestions or changes. And then you guys can decide. Okay, good. And the only other thing I have actually is for executive session. Okay. All right, we will do that next. Okay, whoops, sorry. My mouse just fell. That's what that thud was. <laughs> Administrator's report. Marcus, what do you have for us this evening? Sure. Um, uh, as the mayor s stated before, we actually found a company that holds state a state contract to do some crack sealing. They've done some crack sealing all the way around the village. The work was already completed. Um, Bob saw the work taking place, and he, he w they were in and out in about a day and a half. Uh, he said they did a great job. They came with a piece of equipment. They pressure, um, they air pressure the cracks out, and they sealed it up. And he, uh, from his point of view, they did a great job. Um, so. Um, uh, he, Bob is and George are going to take around maybe to see if we could do some additional crack ceiling. It actually costs about eight or nine thousand dollars to do all the streets that were listed. That so was a pretty good, pretty good price. So that's moving forward. 
um, or be talk about paving next year when we look to see what the financials are. And also, I just got an email from Michael uh, regarding the senior citizens. So I'm going to read this to you. That's okay. I just got it a little while ago. Uh, this was from Michael Lepore. He said, this morning, our, our club president, Cheryl, and I attended a meeting of the Cortland seniors at the senior center. Our purpose was to observe their reopening protocol based on what we observed and also, and also in putting our heads together, Cheryl drew up some proposed guidelines as well as a waiver that our members will sign prior to the start of any meetings. We feel that we feel we can accommodate a meeting with, with up to 20 to 25 uh, individuals and still remain safety, safety precaution for all. Uh, he's gonna, he did attach some documents for my review uh, I'm going, he's going out of town. He wants to meet next week with me and Tim to talk over the cleaning of the building if necessary. Um, and then he's, I'm going to share this with the village boards. I just got it tonight to talk about if the, if the village board feels comfortable about doing this, I'll meet with him next week and I'll report back to the village board to see if this is something we want to do for the seniors. So a maximum of 20 would be able to go to the second floor of the community room. Correct. This is what they're talking about. So I just got it today. I was forwarded to the scene, uh, to, to, to the village board tonight. And then after I meet with them next week, we'll get you some more information. And he believes if everything goes well, then maybe they can have a meeting sometime in November. So they feel that they can follow the CDC guidelines? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he said maybe we can have our first meeting the second week of November if the board, if the board feels comfortable. I feel comfortable with it. You know, this is not like throwing four-year-olds in a room where you can't control their behavior. They're adults, and um, and if there's a if there's a, a release form that's signed, so you know, should anybody fall ill, we're not li you know, we're not liable. I, I don't see an, an issue with it. Uh, just what's the logistics as far as who cleans up the room? Oh, that would be that would be Tim. That's what we got together with Tim to see what would be to, be, to clean before and after. Um, and uh, make sure that we have enough hand, hand sanitizer, everybody keeps the mask on. So we'll now go over all those details. Yeah. Now, what I've seen a lot of places do um, before they shut down, movie theaters, I've seen people using these in outdoor restaurants. They have these, uh, it almost looks like a little handheld vacuum vaporizer. It's a vaporizer where you spray a disintectant mist. So you can go around, you can, you can mist all the chairs. Have you seen these? Cindy? Come on, you, you, you come on, Cindy. I'm here. Yes, we're we're looking at one of those, Nick. Okay. I mean, they actually, I, they, they actually have hand, hand ones. They have to have a backpack one. We're actually thinking of trying to get the pricing for them of off state contract. So now yeah. can we put that that and that's a positive kind of flow. So you can actually spray paper. It doesn't get wet. You can spray your desk, your keyboard. You can yeah. spray everything. So yeah. we, we uh, school, school districts are using them a lot too. Yep. Yeah. When I was away last week, we were doing outdoor dining, and a few of the restaurants between customers came out with those and sprayed down the table in, you know, outdoor seats. Exactly. So, yeah. well, if we can get that before the scene, if, if we agree to have the seniors in, that's something we definitely want to have in place before they come in. Cool. Okay. Thank you. So uh, we need to learn how to live with this virus, but to still be safe. You know, I mean, take the precautions and yeah. they have to, you know, sanitizing and wearing masks. I think they'll be fine. And if there's, you know, and if there's a, they, they said with the town of Cortland, there was a release form that they signed before they could come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. forward, forward this to the board tonight. Works for me personally. I don't know how everybody else feels. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that either, Nick. I, I think it's, it's, it's a good idea to start moving forward with that. And I agree with what you said. You know, they're they're all adults here. You know, they 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 kind of get it. So uh, I would be open to uh, letting them get back to some form of uh, them them meeting once a month or once a week. Yeah, and they they know that they're seniors, and they know yeah. that they more than anybody have to follow the protocols and be careful. Exactly. Marcus, do you have to take temperatures there or not? Yes. Yes. What we'll, we'll take. Yeah, well, for the planning board and zoning board meetings, I'm going to be there and taking everybody's temperature and making sure everybody fill out the form. So I'll be there monitoring those meetings. And mm -hmm. then would the seniors do it, either the senior the senior staff would do it or myself or Tim will do it. We'll make sure all the temperatures are taken before anybody walks into the room. Sounds good. Is that the one you just pointed at somebody's forehead? Yeah. Yes, correct. 
Cindy already has it. Cindy likes that thing. Yeah, I, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I use it every day. Under lock and key. Um, so we, you know what? Uh, it sounds like everybody is in agreement with this. So let's let's uh, I guess move forward this. But if if we see, like they said in October, that there would probably be an uptick. Um, if we see it becomes a major uptick in the area, um, we had two people within the last couple of weeks that tested positive in the village. So uh, both family members, you know, so you would expect that. Right. Um, but, you know, let's, uh, if they're they're willing to come to a meeting and all the precautions are done, I, I, I think we should be okay. Loosely related, you know, there was uh, in Pleasantville's middle school, yep. so in the local paper today, one person came down with COVID, they shut this whole school down. School down. Yep. So, you know, if somebody that was attending came down with COVID, we would have to shut it down. Absolutely. Too bad we didn't do something over the summer months. But, you know, this is like, this is uncharted waters, this whole. Yeah, act. figuring it out as yep. we go. Everybody's yep. doing the quarterback thing and looking back at it and say, shoulda, woulda, coulda. But this was something that we've never had to deal with since what 1918 whatever so it's that's like, right you know it, you know we found things out along the way and, yeah you know Teresa, we learned a lot more in the oh, past gosh. few months yeah. Yeah, you know and and that was that was smart that we held it off in the summertime that, that, absolutely that was good. That was good. one of the things i want to mention when i had the westchester municipal officials meeting um they had the the county medical center um came on to our meeting and they they were saying you know at first uh with the virus I, I found this interesting they thought it was a pulmonary disease so they thought it like ammonia you know it was something like that it affected the lungs but after a couple of weeks you know after you know so many people had gotten sick they did research you know they 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 looked into it and what they found out it was more of a vascular this virus is more of a vascular disease so what that means is it affected the blood and what was happening with the people's lungs while they were having such a hard time breathing is because they had thousands and thousands of very, very, very small blood clots in their lungs. So they basically had a, a pulmonary embolism and that's what hurt those people with their breathing. And they were, you know, originally the medical field was treating it as a pulmonary problem, as, as a um, something similar to ammonia. But in fact, that's not what it was. It was it was really it was really the blood clots that were in the body and especially in the lungs. So, you know, we've learned a lot. We've lost a lot of people, but you know, we just have to be careful. I, I can't stress that enough. Mm -hmm. Marcus, do you have anything else? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, just a reminder, uh, the census continues until the end of October. That was extended at one point. It was the end of September. Um, we are, we are climbing up there a little, you know, we, we're going to be close to, uh, 75%, but I, I know we can do better. Um, the Halloween, speaking of events, um, you've seen <laughs> it, um, the recreation supervisor has a Halloween event scheduled. The CDC guidelines will be followed with that. I'm sure all the kids are excited about that, but we will make sure that people have masks and you know we'll have some extra masks too, just in case somebody doesn't, and we will um, make it as safe, absolutely as safe as possible. Um, there hasn't been anything come out from the state about not having Halloween this year. So I, I think everybody needs to make that decision of whether they will participate this year. Um, I do want to mention uh, there's been some confusion about the $3 million grant that the town received. It was the uh, EDA grant, the federal grant uh, through Nita Lowy's office. That was a grant that... Um, Pat Keenan and I uh, looked around the village. We drove around the village. We drove to the available properties that we have at the time and um, worked really hard on that. But the caveat to that whole thing is that you had to be able to create jobs. And we could have done some things, um, but it, it wouldn't have created jobs. So the town put the grant in. 
and um, down by the um, down by the river there, and they can do some some things where they can create jobs. So that's why they got it. It's not that we didn't want to do it. It's not that we didn't work on it, but we just weren't eligible for this grant. If and when some of the property of Indian Point be, does become available, um, we can apply for that. Um, I know Nita Lowy had um, set this up, this grant program up, uh, $15 million worth for people or communities who were affected by nuclear power plant closing. So we just weren't eligible this time around, but we're not gonna give up on anything. Um, we also have a tri-village group that uh, uh, some people have requested to form a tri-village group to discuss the issues in the tri-village. Um, the village of Buchanan will be participating with the town of Cortland. <clears throat> issues that different residents have and they want to speak out and, and you know, so that's, that's fine. I, I think that's a, a good um, group to be formed there. And I want to I want to thank those who came out to vote on on election day or or sent in absentee ballots. You know I I, I do understand this is a difficult time and for those people to come out. Um, and I also understand because we are just so off schedule with everything this year that a lot of people didn't even realize that it was election day. So um, I thank you for your support. For, or it, it's just, I can't even tell you how, what a challenge this is at this time to be on this board. I, it's just, it, it's constant. It's, um, this is full time for me. I am basically around the clock. I do work weekends. If a resident calls me with a problem, I am available. Um, at one time, I, I, I have to laugh, I look back years ago, and, and it was very part-time job now for, for, for people to do this. But uh, I'm very committed to the village. I, um, I do what I think is right for the village. I am working on many things with this decommissioning. Um, we, the board has been fantastic. Um, we really work together as a group, and we work and I think, I think when I first came in as mayor, I think my main thought was, what is in the best interest of the village? And that is, that is the motto that this board has. And I know a lot of people might not agree with some of the decisions we've made, but the decisions are never political. They're never, it's, I, I've seen it before. It's, you know, you're a Republican, you're a Democrat. That has nothing, that plays nothing into this. We are all residents. We all pay taxes here. We want to see this community blossom. We want, to, we want to see this community survive. I mean, this is a fantastic community. I mean, what a great place for the elderly, you know, to live, to retire here. What a great place for new young families to come in to live here. And we, we just are, are trying everything. We've looked at so many different ways to mitigate the losses that we are facing with the closure of the plant. I have taken some severe heat from some people, very upset about the increases in the, uh, the taxes. And I am not sure um, where they have been when the announcement in January of 2017 came. It's not that the board wants to raise taxes. We have been a very conservative board all these years, fiscally conservative. Let me straighten that out. It's election time in the, in the country. So we've been very fiscally conservative and um, some people have been very, very upset, but I, I don't think they understand what the loss of energy means to this community. And we have looked at different ways to mitigate. Um, we've had some tough discussions with residents who have come to the meetings. And um, those residents, a lot of residents felt that our services were fantastic. Um, and we were basically told they didn't care what the taxes were. They wanted their, they wanted their, um, their services. So going forward, there's going to be some difficult decisions and difficult times ahead. Our next budget is going to be very tough. Um, so we are, we are working on every possible thing. 
Um, still looking for monies through the federal government. Um, you know I work with a consortium of people throughout the country who are experiencing the same thing I do, or like we do, you know, with this the, the closure of Indian Point. Um, we still, it's still active. It hasn't been sent to the governor yet, but there was legislation passed by Sandy Galef and Peter Harkin, and um, that still hasn't gone to the governor's desk. I have um, Stephanie and Marcus watching that. When that happens, we need the support of the whole village. We need the support of the school district. We need everyone's support to contact the governor's office and tell them how important that is. That legislation is allowing um, us, the communities, um, the, the village, the town, and, and the school district would be part of that, to be able to tax the spent school, school tax, the, see it's hard, don't say that 10 times fast, tax the spent fuel casks that are sitting, will be sitting on two pads. Um, they'll be putting a new pad up uh, next year. So if we could get that, if we could get that taxation of that, that would really help our community. It would, it would take a lot of pressure off of us. So there's a lot of things going on still. Um, we continue to look at everything all the time. Um, it's not like we're sitting back and, and taking this lightly. This is not a joke to us. Uh, I must have aged 30 years just since January 17th. But um, what, what really, I think, upsets me and what really, really hurts me that a resident in this community, our community, uh, would actually say, and this was somebody who was an opponent of mine at one time, and basically said, well, if the seniors can't afford to live here, then they're going to have to move. Well, I don't think that's the right attitude to have. Uh, we, we work, this board works for everyone. We don't work for a certain group. We work what's in the best interest of all the residents. It doesn't matter who you are. So let's all remember, at some point in our lives, we're going to get older. We're going to be there also, and the time comes very quickly. So whatever age you are now, don't think it's many miles down the road because it's not. And also remember, there's also people who live here who are disabled, who have gotten sick and no longer can work or on a fixed income. And I think that's a pretty cold and callous thing to say to absolutely anybody that if you can't afford to live here, then you need to move out. That's horrible. And you know what? That's not what, how the community should look at our residents. We all need to work together. That's what makes a great community. We all work together. We're all one community. And we don't single out who should live here and who shouldn't live here. That's, I, I just, I'm sorry. That upsets me, as you can see. So we work for everyone. This is a great board. I am very privileged and honored to be the mayor here. And I am just so happy with the board I work with. They, they really work hard for this village. They have the, the best interest of the village at heart. And, and you know what? If you have to see the things that we've done over the years, um, before 2017, we were moving along, doing many, many projects here in the village, upgrading a lot of different things. So now we face this challenge. Um, I will have um, on October 22nd, there's just one other thing I want to say. October 27th, uh, 22nd, and you'll see the advertisement. I am the chairwoman of the um, Citizens Advisory Panel for the decommissioning of Indian Point. And why that's important is because this is what um, helps communicate to the village and to the community what's going on with the decommissioning. We have a situation going on that I'm really um, I have been vocal about it, but uh, Senator Harcum and uh, our Assemblywoman Sandy Galef want to form a oversight board. And what that oversight board would do would take the control of the decommissioning and the information from our community, we're the host community, that would take that away from us, and they want to form a board that would be with a lot of the state officials, which, okay, if it's the DEC, if it's Homeland Security, you know what, I have no problem with that. I have no problem if they're nuclear experts. I have no problem with that. 
but to form this board and have the meetings three hours away in Albany and include environmental groups such as Riverkeeper on this board, okay? The Riverkeeper who is anti-nuclear, anti-community, obviously, because they didn't give a damn what was happening to us. And to put them on that board, that will not benefit our community at all. It will end up becoming a circus of epic proportions. So I'm fighting it. Linda's fighting it. You know what? I, I'm going to need the support. I'm going to need the support from the community. Because if that goes up to Albany, that oversight board, there will be no participation. Big deal. I'll be on the panel. Big deal. Maybe Supervisor Puglisi, she'll be on the panel. But the focus on the community is not going to be there. This decommissioning process, it's about the community. It's about the community and, and telling people what is going on. That's not going to happen if this oversight board gets formed. So we've had some tough conversations with the senator and the assemblywoman. And at the NRC meeting that I was at last week, they pretty clearly understood where I was coming from. This is about now fighting for this community. This is no joke. I don't take this position as a joke. I'm a fighter. And you know what? I'm, I'm not backing down. So I thank you for your support. I hope you'll still continue to support me. I know some difficult decisions have to be made, but just know that decision of whatever I make is because I think it's in the best interest of this community. <coughs> thank you. I'm sorry if I vented, but I'm a little annoyed about that oversight board in case you didn't notice. All right, uh, Deputy Mayor Funchen, what do you have for us this evening? Thank you. Well, first, I'd like to thank you for showing your confidence in me for making me the deputy mayor again. Uh, and I hope I can be of good good support to you always. Uh, and I'd like to add to everything you said there, especially the thing with Riverkeeper, because uh, they don't seem to get, understand that they shut us out. And, uh, you know, my old statement of, you know, let's have people over fish. But it's it's really true because they just they, they didn't seem to care about what the impact on the community is, and too many things get ridden over like that. So uh, thank you for your your work in that particular area, and uh, I, I guess I can probably more so than most people say, I know how much work you're doing, and I really appreciate it. And uh, uh, everything you've said is true. You, everything you've done has always been in the interest of the village, because let's face it, uh, you're the one on the uh, only one right here right now who grew up in this village, and this has always been your home. And uh, I appreciate it, everything you've done with that. Uh, lastly, the um, we did the 9/11 thing as best we could um, under the circumstances. And I, I, as I said then, as I repeat now, I think with everything that's going on and what happened then is it, we all have tough times now with this pandemic, but we should appreciate every day we're alive, appreciate the loved ones that are around us, and, and uh, thank God for, we all criticize mass media and everything, but at least we have phones, cell phones that we can look at people and, and contact our relatives and our friends. So that's really important. And uh, let's all just keep trying to work together and mm -hmm. uh, work. we go forward. And hopefully we get out from underneath this one, we can have some real meetings and look at each other in a room and not have to be wearing a mask. That's all we got. All right, thank you, Rich. Trustee Zachary, what do you have for <laughs> us tonight? Uh, a few things. Thank you, Teresa. Um, and um, I was happy to hear you venting. Uh, I, I want to just say one thing as far as Riverkeeper goes. Uh, it was kind of, I think we were all kind of offended at how we got kept out of the process uh, of the plant closing. Um, I personally, speaking for myself, feel environmental issues are very important. 
uh, open space conservation and protecting our environment, pollution. There's so many very important things about the that environment that we all need to take very seriously. And it's not meant to degrade environmentalism in general, but Riverkeeper specifically um, did nothing to look at how they were impacting the community. And I think that's what I found offensive. And I think that's a big part of what we all were bothered by, that we were left out of the process uh, and just, just had it sprung on us. And we don't want that to happen again. We want to have input. And there's different ways we can do that. Uh, this three tri-village uh, group that's been proposed, I think, is a good idea. Uh, it may overlap with other things. One thing that is going on right now is a Cortland Buchanan local waterfront revitalization plan. Plan. It's a state grant to study how to use the waterfront over the coming years, sort of a master plan for the waterfront. Um, and the town and village uh, using this grant money are putting together this plan. So the way you can all um, chip into this is that uh, we, we want um, public uh, opinion and a survey has been drafted and it is online. So I want to encourage everybody, you can go to the Village of Buchanan website or you can go to the Town of Cortland website and you will find a link that says LWRP, Local Waterfront Revitalization Plan. Um, you go on the Buchanan homepage and you'll see it in the list on the left of, of, of uh, links, LWRP. If you go to that, you'll find the website for, the, uh, for this Waterfront Revitalization Group uh, with a nice picture of uh, the, the shoreline at Lens Cove Park. And on the left, you'll see a thing that says click here to complete the survey. Uh, the survey has one fairly simple part that you could do in a few minutes to express your opinion. There's a few basic questions about um, what you'd like to see uh, happen in the town of Cortland and in the village of Buchanan along the waterfront. And then there's a more elaborate section which you have the option to complete where it will focus on specific areas like um, um, you know, in the town of Cortland, in, in the village here, the, uh, the, the Indian Point property, the uh, Lens Cove Park property. Um, so I highly <coughs> encourage everybody to participate in that. It will help us do what we're trying to do, which is come up with a plan for the waterfront. Um, and, um, <clears throat> you know, and just in general, try to stay informed because we want people to be active and involved. Um, you know, and express what it is what, that we want as a community, not have it sprung on us. Um, so I'd also like to uh, point out that before our next meeting, we have, there will be uh, something called uh, Election Day again. We had one last month now, but the real election is coming up this November 3rd. So I encourage everybody to uh, get out to vote. Um, it's a very important election. Whatever your feelings are, get out there and express them. Um, and, um, you know, and pay attention. You really have to be, keep yourself informed because there's so much misinformation because a lot of people now get their news from Twitter and Facebook and, uh, the old hard, reliable news sources are being discredited. And, you know, if you find one is a little too far left or one's a little too far right, there are more objective news sources, even on TV. Um, you know, the, the, the networks are certainly not as uh, slanted as um, some people might say about MSNBC or about uh, Fox News, which tend to lean left and right. You know, you can find more neutral sources of news. You could read newspapers that give you more background information. Don't rely just on people's Facebook postings for your news. It's that's, apparently, that's how a lot of people get their news these days, and I think it's uh, not a good thing. Um, so uh, the last thing, I just want to give a shout out to Thomas Edison. As most of you are probably aware, it was on this day in, 19, in, in 1889 that Thomas Edison showed his first motion picture uh, at a theater, in, 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 not a theater, in a, in a space in West Orange, New Jersey. But I'm sure you were all thinking about that already. So here's to Thomas Edison and all the great movies that I've seen over the years. That's my report. 
Nick, and yes, Nick, I, I do vent at times, but my doctor's quite amazed that my blood pressure is actually excellent. So Yeah. Well that's because you vent. you don't hold that you don't hold it in. Yeah. <laughs> well well you are you are doing a great job and I, I will also add that it is a full time job and and, and uh, the village is lucky to have you in that position right now. Uh, Thank you. working your I'm gonna home. blush, Nick, stop. Okay. okay. Don't forget to give me the twenty bucks we agreed to for saying okay, that. No problem. I dropped the cash off. <laughs> no, but it's true. It's true. Working very hard for the village. And Thank you. Yeah, it's my home. It's my home. Yeah. Trustee Jackson. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, thanks everybody who's listening in on to this Zoom meeting as we continue to uh, take care of the village's business. And, you know, as I've often said in the past, one of the great things, uh, one of the many great things about this village is certainly our location uh, and where we are in the Hudson Valley uh, is very, uh, in a very good position. And also the services that, that we offer here in the village are, are excellent. As I talk to other people in the Hudson Valley, I mean, you know, from our trash services to our uh, leave pickup, uh, you know, just just the tight knitness of it is very commendable. Uh, you know, I just want to say to everyone, and as we talk about development and, and those type of things, before we get blindsided uh, by the governor and, and others, you know, we were talking as a board about how we would handle the closing of Indian Point uh, when we thought we had about eight years to go before the pilot program ended and looking at what type of things we would like to see happen. Because keeping in mind, we don't own the land, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Entergy owns the land uh, and they're on their way out. We're going to see what happens with this hotel, Hotec uh, uh, Corporation. Uh, but that's, I think people just need to understand that we can tax the land and we're looking at various ways to tax the, the spent fuel rod uh, storage uh, containers and those type of things. But, you know, we don't own that land. Mm -hmm. And speaking of land that is indeed owned by the town, uh, some of you may have heard about the Port, uh, Portland project that's uh, being uh, examined in the, in the town. And uh, again, that's on their private land. When they bought that land, they uh, were going to uh, stop the buzz, the electrical wires that were going to be planned, uh, planned there. And they were looking, as we are looking, for recreational use of the land. Um, for 70 years, almost, uh, you know, we've had this nuclear power plant here, and it's an opportunity to do some smart development. I mean, we'll make sure that our voices are heard in terms of what can go on the land that's in uh, Indian Point uh, once they start dis uh, dismantling the plant. But, you know, we, we've got to be vigilant. Uh, we've got to be nimble in terms of one, some of the things that we're looking at as, as it uh, goes forward from our zoning and the idea of an overlay plan for the village. So, you know, we are engaged, as the mayor spoke about, and it's a great privilege for me to be involved uh, in, uh, in this. Um, the loss of taxes is a big, a big thing. It, it was not a light hit. And as the mayor said, we had been talking about it and trying to find ways. Our, our budget was cut to the bone, so there wasn't a lot of things to cut back on. But uh, as we move forward, uh, we're going to continue to make sure that our our village services are excellent and that the village workforce is excellent, our police force and our highway uh, uh, department and our office staff, for sure. Um, schools back in, even though it's one or two days and different schedules for the elementary school kids and different schedules for the high school kids, but, you know, be aware as you navigate and drive around the village, uh, that school is indeed uh, back in. Um, the other thing is, as always, curb your dog. Uh, <laughs> beware of stuff going into the catch basins. 
because it does go down into the lake. So we must always be mindful of, uh, of our environment. And uh, uh, voting, uh, if you haven't gotten a slip that says where you can do your early voting, uh, you can go to the county website and they will show you, I, I think uh, the closest place for us is in on Nelson Street in Peekskill. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's either October 23rd or 24th that uh, early voting uh, starts. So uh, I just want to say to everyone, uh, these are tough times. Uh, we're in a good position because people get the idea of massing up and making sure that we take care of each other as neighbors and uh, in, in the village. And to tell you the truth, I, I'd rather not be any other place than where we are uh, here. We've got young families moving into the village. And uh, again, our services are fantastic. Uh, other than that, um, that's it. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Dwayne. Trustee Pasquale, what do you uh, have? Thank, thank, thank you. Um, I was just going to uh, uh, mention a little bit about the. Um, uh, we spoke a little bit about, about the, uh, you know, the, the COVID and, um, you know, with the, all the positive cases that we've been having in the area, you know, Westchester, Rockland County. You know, it's important that we all continue to do what we've been doing to keep our COVID level here in Buchanan so low. I think, you know, we all, all want to get back to some sem semblance of normalcy. It's been a rough year, but let's just continue doing what we're doing. And, and you know, it, it's it's amazing. I sit here and I think that I remember when we left the school district, it was like I see in two weeks, you know, flatten the curve. And my God, it's been, what, nine months, yeah. you know. But let's just keep doing what we're doing. And, and you know, hopefully uh, things will get to back to some sense of normalcy. Uh, I'd like to personally congratulate you, Teresa, Rich, and, and Nick on on your re-elections, I, I, I know you didn't have any um, really challenges, and uh, you know, and <laughs> you mean opponents? <laughs> yeah, 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 opponents. Yeah, you didn't really have any opponents, but even even if you did, I'm sure all three of you would, you would have won. So Thank it's you. it's it's really nice to be able to at least in the foreseeable future keep us together as a board, run by Teresa as our mayor, and uh, and I do think Teresa, that you would have had a lot more people come out and support you if the election would have been um you know it wasn't really it wasn't really broadcast enough nobody really knew about it it was local you know, you know I, I i had people come up and say they didn't even see the sign like on the lawn that today was election day mm -hmm. you know so like i said uh, you're doing a wonderful job and we are so lucky to have you i just wanted you to know that and uh november yeah. 3rd is election day so everybody get out and vote and um that's about all I have. Thank you. Hi, thank you, Trustee Pasquale. Cindy, do you have, is there anyone that's called in comments from the floor, questions? Uh, nothing. Okay. So I, I would just like to take one other minute. I, I'd like to thank everyone I work with, Marcus, our administrator, uh, Stephanie, our village attorney, the village board, um the highway department the, the police department you know all of us together work you know to make this a great community and then i will not forget the ladies in the office Cindy, <laughs> our work, and sharon our office uh, assistant she, these girls yeah. uh, you know what i can't say enough i can't say enough um when the residents have a problem if they have a question they need help with anything these ladies go above and beyond to help. Absolutely, we uh, sure do. What? Try I, our best. Yeah, you absolutely do, yeah. Cindy. So thanks, Sharon, for from me, the board. I mean, thank you so much for taking care of our residents so so well. You're welcome. Okay, so I am going to make a motion to go into executive session to discuss uh, personnel. On a motion? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, everyone, for joining in.